differences on the level of their eyes and differences on the level of the Rabbanim between Arusa and Nesua. The Gemara rattles off a few years. The Yosha, the Tamila, the Hafen, the Doreha. Yeah, the Einish Misa is different. The Einish Misa by Naira Hamarosa, Shazinsa, Skilo. By Nesua, the Einish Misa is, uh, is Chenek. So there are a lot of differences on the level of their eyes. Uh, Shirksus Vyoyna is only after Nisu and during Eris, and there's no Shirksus Vyoyna. Oh, a lot of differences between Arus and Nisu, both on the level of their eyes and the level of their Abonim. The Bichas Nisu in Alpi Pashtus is for sure not a Bichas HaMitzvah. You don't even say Asher Kedishana the Mitzvah Yisabitzivana. We say six brachas in addition to the Bar Piagafen. So that's why it's called Shevet Brachas. We say Bar Piagafen with another six brachas, and they're all Bichas Shevach Lahidoa. <clears throat> uh, that's in connection with the Nisuin. What exactly constitutes the Nisuin? The three ways to make Erisin, either case of Hashtar Rabia, the Chachamim prohibited Kiddush Ebiya. The Gemara says uh, in Yavam, the Gemara considers it a chutzpah. If a man is Mkadish Babia, we don't fully understand why it was Mutamanatar, but the Chachamim prohibited it. And even though uh, we're left with Kesav Hashtar, the Ramam writes, and Kesav is only Torah Shabal Peh. Ishtar is Torah Shebechsav, the Ramam Ratz Kanog, Kol Yisrael, Akadosh Bekesef. The meaning by the Orthodox Jews is to be in the Kaddish Bekesef. What does it mean, Kanog, Kol Yisrael? The Ramam's Sefer of Mishnah Torah is written for the Jewish people. What do you mean, Kanog, Kol Yisrael? means the Orthodox Jews are the Kaddish Bekesef as opposed to the Karaites. The different groups of Karoim, there are um, African, Asian, and European Karoim. Each group has different shtick. But one thing they all three have in common, they don't accept, they don't follow Torah Shabbat Peh, and none of them have Kiddush Kesef. So that's why the Ramam sounds like that. That's why the Minik seems to have developed that by the Orthodox Jews, they want to demonstrate that we do subscribe to the Torah Shabbat Peh. So we chose Davke to be Mekadosh Bikesef. We don't even do Kesef, we do Shal Kesef. We give a ring. The ring is based on a Zohar. The Ramam quotes a Zohar, Tikkuni Zohar. That we do Shove Kesev. Shove Kesev is Torah Shabbat Peh on top of Kesev. When you learn the first Mishnah in Kiddushan, so there's a gigantic Torah there on Beis Amad Aleph in the, the Ramban and the Rajbo. They all discuss what is the mocker of this din? How did the Tanoim know that there's such a din? That Shove Kesev is Kesev. Just uh, last week on Thursday, we spoke about the Parsha. So the Torah writes on the Beis Amad Aleph that uh, the mocker for Kiddushe, Shove Kesev, is good Kesev, is in Parshas Sebuchu Kaisai, I think it was, that if a person sold himself as an Evedivri because he was broke, he needed uh, money, then if he gets a big Yerusha from a rich uncle, uh, Uncle Sam dies, gets a big Yerusha, he can buy his way to freedom. So it says, the Loshin is Kesev Yashiv Lebolev, I think. Yashiv, Yashiv. So the Gemara says, Yashiv, the Rabbi Shavikesev, that you can even have Gula Satsmo, Aide Shavikesev, so Tesis claims on Kiddush and Beis Amaralaf on the first Mishnah, that is the mocker that Shavikesev is good by Kiddush. Okay. From Parshas Bechul Kaisan. In the days of the Gemara, it wouldn't appear that they recited Bircha Seresen over a cup of wine. It was like a Birchas HaMitzvah. You're about to perform according to the Ramah. Birchas HaMitzvah, Birchas Shavach Vahidoya. You don't say, Oisem uh, Aisa Bereshis, Oshkoche Gros Mali Yodlam, when there's thunder or lightning, you don't say it over a cup of wine. Not all brachas do you say over a cup of wine. So the Birchas Erisin, you don't have any mocker in the Gemara. That seems to have been introduced in the days of the Geonim. Uh, the Birchas Nisuin, some have the Girs in the Gemara. The Russian beginning of Ksubis has such a Girsif in the Gemara that Bichas Nisun used to be recited over a, a cup of wine. So in the days of the Gemara, there was a pause of a year in between Bichas Eris and Bichas Nisun. So we understand why we say a second Bar Piagofen. Today, the going and moved up the Nisun because it's not so safe, it's risky to have the girl a foolish, she's an Eshesish. Once you give the ring, you say, Harab Mikodeshesli, the girl is an Eshesish. And she's going to have an affair with someone else. She's going to be a surah by love, be a violation of Lysina, but she's not living with the husband. So it's a, a problematic situation. So in the days of the guy in him, they decided that uh, it's too risky, and they decided you don't have a year's pause in between Erison and the Nisuin. Maybe you get engaged uh, for a couple of uh, months, also not a smart idea. Once you got engaged, you should get married. 
And then you have right away the Nisuin immediately following the Eris. And so the question is, so why do you say Bar Piagofen a second time over the second cup of wine? So the Ashkenazim have the practice that on Pesach night by the Seder, we say Bar Piagofen four times, because we're saying four brochas alakos. Uh, the Mechaber quotes the Minik, the Shita, Shita, and the practice from the Chachmei Svaret. You only say Bar Piagofen twice over Kiddush. In the second cup of wine, Hashem Yalon is covered with the first part of Yagofen. And then you got a bench, Bichas Hamos, and after the meal, and then you're going to say Bar Yagofen over the coast, Shal Bichas Hamos, and then the fourth coast over the Bichas Hashir. You don't have to say Bar Yagofen because it's covered with the Bar Yagofen over the benching, over the third cup of wine. So according to the Ashkenazim, who follow the Shita, that whenever you have four brachas on the coast, each time you have to say Bar Piagofen, even though Mitam Hichas Bichas Anenin really shouldn't be required, it should have been covered with the previous Bracha Bar Piagofen. But whenever you have a Bracha Lakas, you got to say Bar Piagofen. So according to the Ashkenazi practice, uh, it's okay. According to the Sephardi practice, it's not a problem. Why did they say Bar Piagofen over the Kosh Shal Nisuin? They just said a few minutes ago. So just to make it a little longer of a pause, there hardly any pause in between Eris and the Nisuin. So make it a little longer, the Rabbeinu Tam introduced the practice to read the Ksuba. Under the Chuppah, you read the Ksuba. Why do you read the Ksuba? Just to waste a little time, to have to make a little more of a pause. Uh, Hagos Maimini quotes this, that the Rashi and the Rabbeinu Tam, the grandson of Rashi, were the ones who introduced the Kriya Saksuba just to have a pause. Uh, because in the days of the Tanakh, there was a whole year in between Eris and the Nisun. So we shouldn't do away with the whole practice of having two different stages in the marriage. So we introduced that. No, the reading of the Ksuba, uh, or let's say if the rabbi plans to give a sermon under the chub, so the best time to give the sermon is right after the Kriya Saksuba, because the whole purpose of the Kriya Saksuba is to have a half socket, to have a pause. So we have a little more of a pause by holding a, a sermon. Yeah. The Gemara and Kiddush learns that from the Pasuk that, uh, that if a man is Mekadosh and Isha and you don't have two Adam watching at the time it's Mekadosh, so the Kiddush is not Chal. Dovish Abiyarbat needs two Adas, Rab Chaim Salavechi coined an expression. We call it Adas Lakim Hadova. Adas Lakim Hadova means if you don't have Adam, the Kiddush simply doesn't take effect, even though he and she both moida, the Chas and the Kal, they both admit. The woman admits that she's an Eishas Ish. The answer is she doesn't admit. If she says the boy was Mekadosha, but there were no Edim, so then the, then the Kiddushan is simply not Chal. Why did the Rabbin Atam choose to introduce this Hapsoke? Why didn't you have a rabbi hold a sermon or a chazan sing a, a nigan? The answer is because the Rishadim introduced a Chumra that the chazan has to hand over the to the Kala uh, before the before the Chupa. Why did he have to hand it over? Because the Gemara has a suffix uh, in in uh, Ksubis. The Gemara has a suffix. The way the Rambam read the Gemara, the way the other Rishon read the Gemara, there is no such Gemara. But the way the Rambam read the Gemara, the Gemara had a suffix. If uh, if Chupa is Kaina, if the girl didn't go to Mikvah, Chupa Shene Royal Abiyah. So is the chupa koina or not? So the Ramam says, L'chadchidi she never do a chupas nida, because it's a suffix, and it'll be a suffix brach levatola. But if they did go ahead and they did the chupas nida, so then uh, you don't repeat the brachas later, because it'll be suffix brachas levatola. But you shouldn't have done it. Uh, so uh, some of the Rishonim hold that not only is it an issue if it's a chupa shenevoy lebida min ha the girl is pierced on nida, what kala, uh, if the kala doesn't have the ksuba, the gemara has a, a din of rab meir. Also, lo'adam lahasha says ishto sha'achas balo ksuba. The husband is not allowed to live with his wife to have marital relations if she doesn't have the document of the ksuba in a safe place, because she may not feel uh, secure with the marriage. She may give in to every mishigas the husband has because she's afraid he can divorce her any minute. Strictly speaking, if he divorces her, even if she doesn't have a ksuba, she can still uh, make him pay the ksuba, but she may be nervous. She may not realize that. So the din requires that she has to have a ksuba in her hand. 
So that's why the practice developed that the chosen gives the ksuba to the kala before they have the chupa. So the chupa is really be uh, even on the level of the rabbanon. Um, Maseches kala has an expression the kala b'lay bracha asur l'bay l'kenida. Is obviously it's not not kenida. Nida is an isa derais and kala b'lay bracha is only adin the rabbanon. I mean, I've told you the kala is matar is b'lay bracha. Yeah. Uh, what does that refer to? It refers to the brachas nisuin. So the seven, the six brachas, but the bar piyagof, and I call the sheva brachas. So the sheva brachas <coughs> require a minion. That's uh, mishnayis. That's a gemara learns that from sukkim. You need ten people to be present in order to be able to recite uh, the sheva brachas. Um, if you don't have a minion, if you don't have ten people, then you can't say the sheva brachas. So there's a big machlaikas that the Shmuel and Ebenezer quotes this machlaikas, uh, where the kala b'loi bracha is to be taken literally below bracha. If you don't have 10 people and you can't say the bichas nisu and bichas eris and lachatchil, you need 10, but if it's a shas atchak, you can recite bichas eris and without asara, without a minion. But bichas nisu and the 10 is the ikuva. If you don't have 10 people, you're not allowed to say the bracha. So that, does that mean so the woman cannot become a terrorist labai because you need kala b'loi bracha? That's how the Rashboa holds, that if you don't have a minion, you can't have uh, the birchas nisuin, and then they can't live together. And uh, several achreinim disagree with the Rashboa, and they're of the opinion that the kala b'loi brochas lavdafka means kala b'loi nisuin. But if you have a chuppah, even though you don't have 10 people and you're not able to recite the, all the seven birchas nisuin, she, she had nisuin, so she's materis labayla. Then Arusa is also materis labayla. But with the Rabbana, they prohibited Arusa Asur Labailo uh, until you do Nisun. So they did Nisun. So uh, the Nadi Bihude writes an expression. I was very surprised. Nadi Bihude writes that the Rov Haposkim are of the opinion that Kala Blai Brocha is not to be taken literally. It means Kala Blai Nisun. It doesn't really mean Kala Blai Bichas Nisun. So if you don't have a minion, you can do the Nisun without the, without the Bichas Nisun. I was surprised why, uh, he, because the Peshmur quotes two Achreinim who disagree with the Rashba. That's called the Rov HaPaskim, but that's what the Rashba writes. And there was a Dayan in London by the name of Dayan Grosnas. He learned in Radna and he learned by Rabbi Baruch Be. He was friendly with the, some of the Rebbe's in YU in my time, Rabbi Gerelik and all the others. They knew each other from the Yeshivas. So he has in his Chuva, Lev Aryeh, and there used to be a Tamachachim here in, in New York. He passed away many years ago. Rabbi Tuvia Goldstein used to live in the same building as Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. He gave very, he used to give, uh, they published uh, several volumes of his shiurim. He used to give shiurim on Gemaris, and he used to always lasuke shmeitz alibe de hilchas, to bring it down halacha la maisa. So uh, in, in one of his svarim, they published the shiurim after he passed away. Very nicely written. So he also has like that, that if you have a big shas atrak, and apparently in Europe there were communities where they simply didn't have a minion of, of Jews there. So they would do a, a nisuin without a minion, and they wouldn't say the birchus nisuin on the assumption, like uh, like the achreinim against the Rajbo, that the birchus nisuin is not me'akev. She's materus labayla without the birchus nisuin. Now, because of this uh, uh, sickness, that the epidemic that's going around, and it's uh, not healthy to have too big of a crowd together. So some of the people got married without a minion. So they didn't say the brichas nisuin. And the kala b'la brachas materas l'bayla with the nisuin alone. The Pnei Yeshua and the country is achren and it's chidushim and ksubis is bothered with akasha. How does the rabbi say the bar piyagofen on behalf of the chos and kala of the brichas erisen and he's not taking a sip of the wine? The bichas bar piyagof and of the bichas nisuin that didn't bother him uh, because that uh, many hold that that was Medina de Gemara that the uh, bichas nisuin is supposed to be recited al akos. So the Gemara says yotza uh, moitzi not only applies I can read the Megillah for you even though I was ready yotze I can blow shofar for you even though I was ready yotze I can even say kiddush for you even though I already was yotze kiddush and I can even say bar piyagof for you. Even though I'm not drinking the wine at all, I'm saying bar piyagof and a kiddush for you, and your yotze. So the same over here by birchas nisun, you say bar piyagof and you say the six brachas. So the rabbi can say the bracha. That's not a problem. But the birchas erisin that was introduced, that was 
introduced to be al ayayin, apparently in the days of the Goenim, in the days of the Gemar, Medina, the Gemar, Bicha Seris, and doesn't require that it should be uh, al ayayin. So that's the Pnei Yeshua's question. How come the common practice is that the rabbi says the Bichas um, Erisin for the Chasun Kala, he doesn't, sip, he doesn't take a sip of the wine at all, and he gives it to the Chasun Kala. So Pnei Yeshua is Tarkash. So one of the uh, members of the board of Aloj and Yeshiva was Rabbi Yosef Laslutzker. He was named as Rabbi Yosef Paimer, his name was. Family name was Paimer. And uh, he was known as a big tzaddik. As a child, he was very wild, and, uh, and they threw him out of Cheda, and uh, I didn't know what to do with him. So he felt very bad, and then he made a hachlot. He wants to go to Valoshin to learn. So his father thought that he was kidding. Father thought, a kid does not a word. How can he go to Valoshin? He didn't. He went to Valoshin, and he learned and became a big guy. He got smicha, and uh, then later on, the city sluts needed a rabbi. So Rabchaim Valoshin recommended they should take that wild kid. They should take Rabbi Yosel Lutzka. So he, later on, he was on the board of Avajan when they had the big Dini Torah about who should be Rosh Hashiva. They had a few times Dini Torah. So he was on the board to decide. Uh, so he wrote a collection of Shalas Jews that wasn't printed during his lifetime. It was just printed recently, 100 years after he passed away. Uh, it was printed around 30, 40 years ago by Machon Yerushalayim. So he has a tshuva, so he says, Pnei Shu, Kasha, but uh, the Teretz is that once the Goenim in- introduced the practice that you recite Bircha Seris and Alayai, and so we treat it like Kiddush, so you can be Moitzi the others with the Brat Yagov and also. But uh, the same safe I mentioned before, the Afrika Yam, he writes that uh, Reb Simcha Zelik told him, Reb Simcha Zelik was the Dayan in Brisk. He also learned the Valojan. And um, and he always, always used to follow Rab Chaim around all the time to watch everything that Rab Chaim did and uh, follow everything that he said. He was very careful to Rab Chaim. Rab Simcha Zelig said he never noticed this on his own, but Rab Chaim once mentioned it to him, that when he would be Masari Kiddushin, he would say the Barat Agafen over the Bircha Zerisin, he would always see to it that he should spill over a little bit of, a little bit of wine from the cup, should drip on his fingers. And then later on, he would lick the wine off of his finger in an inconspicuous fashion. Abchayim did this. That's why Absim Chazag never noticed it. He didn't want to violate the meaning. The meaning was that the rabbi in Masada Kedushin does not take a sip of the wine. Abchayim didn't want to demonstrate that all the rabbonim are doing wrong. But it was choshish for the Pnei Kasha. So his practice would be that he should take a sip of the wine in a very inconspicuous uh, fashion. Yes, yeah, some of the brachas that we recite under the chuppah um, <clears throat> do not begin with Baruch Ato Hashem. And so on. So that we assume that's a bracha smucha l'chavata. So Rabbi Pesla Frank has a tshuva where he discusses the taina that some rabbanim said if the, two, if the second bracha doesn't begin with Baruch Ato Hashem, does a smucha l'chavata, so maybe it has to be recited by the same person. Years ago, there was they would you would pick one rabbi, and the one rabbi would say all the brachas. They wouldn't divide up all the brachas. This, uh, this is a recent thing. I still remember when uh, when they had one rabbi said all the brachas when I was younger. One rabbi, you would pick the Masada Kedushin. They said all the brachas under the chuppah. This is a new thing, that they break up all the brachas. Yeah, they say that the Satma Rebbe made from, that the day will come, that they'll even split up the syllables, they'll be mechaban one person to say bu and one person to say rich, bu rich. They'll be mechaban different people to say different words of the bracha. What exactly constitutes the nisuin? So there are different opinions. So there's one opinion that badekin is the nisuin. Yeah. So if badekin is the nisuin, that's quoted by the Mordechai in the first parak and Ksubis. And when you look in Shulchan Aruch, it's quoted in Ebenezer, you won't find it. In the end of Yeridea, when they talk, there's a whole simon in the end of Yeridea about Mes Aviv Shal Chasen, Ahimu Shal Kala, uh, do you proceed with the wedding or not? So there the Dogal Mervava quotes, uh, discusses this, this shita in the Mordechai, that the Badek and is the Nisun. So some had the practice that the Chasen would stay by the Chasen station, the Rabbanim would go do the Badek. Chasen wouldn't even go. Some Chasidim still have that practice. I attended uh, such a wedding more than once. Um, so th- they obviously think, uh, also the Dogma Vava writes in the end of Yeridea, 
Obviously, the Chassan has appointed the Rabbanim, or it's self-understood, even though he never said it explicitly, it's self-understood those communities where they have that practice that the Chassan is appointing the Rabbanim as his shliach to do the Nisuin. Rabbi Soloveitchik didn't like that because the Pashtas, he, they have a whole Dvar uh, Torah, that you cannot appoint the shliach to do Nisuin. You can make a shliach for Erison, but not for Nisuin. <coughs> So uh, Rab Salvechik was choshish for this opinion that Badekan is the Nisuin. So sometimes he would have the chasen be miyachad edim for the Badekan, because there's a big machlekes and achrayim where the only kiddushin needs edus l'kiyim adav or even Nisuin. So we're machmer to have edi yichud because we're choshish for the Ramam's opinion that yichud is the Nisuin. So you want to have edim for the Nisuin. Some say it seems to be a machlekes the Ramam and the Ravid, whether uh, the Marcheshes writes like that. Achashis was a dying in Vilna. He was older than Rab Chaim Moise, and he outlived Rab Chaim Moise. So in his Sefer, he um, he shows that it seems to be a machlekes, the Ramam and the Raivet, where the Nisuin, where the Chupin needs Eidus Lukim Adavim. So we usually machmer for that, that you need Eidus Yichud. So then uh, there's room to be machmer that you should need Eidus Lukim Adavim for the Badekin as well. Because the different opinions, what is the Nisuin? So one opinion is the Badekin, one opinion is standing under the canopy, because the canopy constitutes a cheder bifnei atzmai, because it's a tzuras ha-pesach. So the sheet that holds that it's a tzuras ha-pesach, you look in the big Ebenezer, so they have um, um, comments on the side of the page, I think it's called Eizem Uh So they have those achrenim hutayna, that the chupe used to be a paroches, or a piece of cloth, rectangular shape, with four circular rings in the four corners. They had a pole that went, the top of the pole went into the ring. So there was really nothing going from on top of one pole to on top of the other pole. So that was a problem in Hilchas Erevin, when you make a Tzuras HaPesach, when we call in Yiddish and Erev, uh, but in the Gemara it's called the Tzuras HaPesach, you have to have Kanem, 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 And if the Kanem, Kanem, is Minatzah, they have two poles and the string is tied, not on top of the pole to on top of the pole, around the top of the pole to around the top of the pole, so that's not acceptable. It has to be kanal gabein. So that's why many of the old parochas in Europe that they used to use for the chuppe, so that instead of just putting uh, four circular rings in the four corners, they would put a slit in the cloth and have the poles directly under the cloth. So that a little bit of cloth was going from on top of one pole to on top of the other pole. This was to satisfy the opinion that the chuppe uh, constitutes uh, nisuin because it's a tzuras ha-pesach and it's a hachnasa levshuso. The chos and kala went into this room together. Uh, we usually have yichud, the Ramam says yichud aroi lebiya. Nobody else in the room here. Everybody's standing in the same room. That's not a yichud aroi lebiya. But not everybody holds like that Ramam that has to be uh, so private. Uh, another version is that the but that the uh, chupe is uh, can, constitutes nisuin because it's the same as badekin. They used to put um, the, by the yekis and by the svardim they put a talus on top of the chas and the kama based on the pasuk in, in Megillah rusa for asta knafecha ala masecha when the chas puts uh, his beged on top of the head of the kala or they have the meaning they put the talus on both of them. So that's the farasta knafech alamasecha that constitutes the nisun. So what do you do if the girl didn't go to mikveh? So you can't have them so close to each other, standing on top of each other with uh, with uh, one piece of cloth on both. So they have the cloth on top. That's if you hold that chupe is a, based on a farasta knafech alamasecha. So you really don't need the poles. You don't need the tzuras apesach, but the indeed it should be cloth. A lot of times they have a chupe where the top is plastic or the top is uh, wood. Uh, something other than cloth. So there's a kpeda that it should have to be cloth. And then uh, the Mogad Avram quotes a tshuva from Abdul Mizrahi, and it really says this in the Maharil. Maharil was read, uh, way before, um, I think in the 1300s. So the Maharil writes under the chuppah, right after they finish all the Shevet Brachas, you should rush the Chas and Kala to the Yichud room, so the Birchas Nisuin should not be over the over. He said Birchas Nisuin and the Yichud, and we were choshish for the Rambam, that they're going to the Yichud room is the Nisuin. 
So you should go immediately. Maritzim, you rush the chasen kala to the yichud room. Bayas, the photographers took over. So they take uh, the boys dance takes a long time, and everybody's kissing everybody else under the chup, and everybody's wishing mazel tov, and it takes a long time. It's really in violation of what it says. The Morgan Avram has this that uh, whenever you say a bracha over food, Morgan Avram is an archaim. Whenever you say a bracha over food, you shouldn't wait too long. Shouldn't pause too long in between the bracha and eating of the food. And this is more of a kpeda when you recite a bracha before performing a mitzvah, that you shouldn't pause too long in between the bracha and nasiyas mitzvah. Here, the bichas nisun is not really a bichas mitzvah, it's a bichas shabach vahodah, but it's supposed to be in connection with the nisun, so in connection with. That's what the Rishanim say, even though it's not really the same din of bichas mitzvah, evil asiyasam. But it should be similar to that, so it shouldn't be over the other. It shouldn't be too far in advance uh, of the uh, of the nisun. So we do all of the above, and then the Vilna Gaon Shita and Chacham Avadia Paskins like that. He says that's the Svardish of Sakis that the nisun really consists of when they go home at the end of everything when they go home five hours later. So that's a big problem. They're saying Bichas nisun now, and the nisun doesn't take effect until uh, they don't have a yichud. They don't go to the yichud room. And they don't have a mind to be kind of with the chuppah. They wait till they go home. So isn't that over the over? The Birchus Nisun was recited now. And not can have the, the Nisun until they go home. So that is a problem. So Chacham Avadye writes, it's a problem. He's going to write about it somewhere else. I never read the way he writes about it somewhere else. Rabbi, what's considered too long in terms of by a chuppah or any bracha? It should be right away. I don't know if you have to run, literally, the expression of the maharil is maritzim, is a chasm, is a kala. You rush the chasm kala to the cheder ayichud. So we don't rush, but they should go right away. By us, they spend an awful lot of time. It's really not What's right. It's like the time expiring. Like if it's an hour later, it's too long, or 10 minutes. Is there any, in halacha, is there any actual time? I don't think it has to do with time. It's, uh, you should go immediately, right after the chuppah. They should go without pausing. Without getting involved in something else. By us, they always get involved in something else. That's not right. In recent years, there's a new chumra that uh, the rabbis will request of the Eri Kiddushin that they should be present when the chasen gives over the ksuba to the kala under the chuppah. Why do you need Adam watching when the chasen gives it over? So the Gemara says in Gitten, Davdal and Amalaf, that there was a machlek Zamer and Rebbe Lazar by a get and by all story Kenyan, where the Eri Hasima Karsi accomplish to make it into a story, you need Eri Mesira Karsi. So we pass on the like uh, Rab Loza, the Eri Mesira Karsi. But uh, many have pointed out that this is really a big mistake because the Nesibas points out in Chashmish, but the Ksuba as we have it is a star raya. It's not a star king. We already made a Kabbalah's Kenyan. And we wrote for Koninimine, the last line the Ksuba says, We have already made a Kabbalah's Kenyan with the Chasen. I'll call Mande Kosen before Ishleel. We already made a Kenyan. So the Shtar is the Shtaraya, it's not a Shtar Kenyan. The Shtaraya, everybody agrees that it's Eide Chasima. You don't need Eide Messir at all. So it's really, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the Adem, you have to be careful. The Adem should be, should not be Kroivim. The Adem should not be Kroivim to the Chasen, the Kala, but Kroivim doesn't mean a tenth cousin. Kroivim means a very close, very close crop. Strictly speaking, uh, two brothers are called Rishon Barishan, and their sons are called Shani Bishani. First cousins are called Shani Bishani. So, first cousins are puzzle, and even if there's a boy and a girl who are cousins, and the girl is married, that's a Shani Bishani with one Balki Ishtaf. You have a Shani Bishani, two girls are first cousins. They're both married, so strictly speaking, Shani Bishani, you don't apply Balki Ishtaf twice. So if you have two sisters who are married to two husbands, so that's called a gis. Gis is a, strictly speaking, gis is a brother-in-law based on two balkishtas, two sisters are both married. So you say balkishta twice on the level of rish and berish. On the level of sheni bisheni, you do not say balkishta twice. On the level of rish and bisheni, let's say you have an aunt and a niece, and the aunt is married and the niece is married. So you apply balkishta twice by rish and bisheni, one is from the upper generation, one is for the lower generation. So that's Machlaikis, the Balamor and the Ramban in Sanhedrin. And the two opinions are quoted, the Choshe Mishpat and Hilcha Sedus, where they say Balki Yishtai twice by Rishon Bisheni. Rishon Bisheni, for sure, you don't say. 
Sheni b'shlishi is kosher leidus. Sheni b'shlishi is kosher leidus. So uh, a lot of times under the chuppah, they start making a... Uh, so there's a chumrah, the Beishmol and Abenesa quotes a chumrah from Achreinim, that you shouldn't, you shouldn't even have revi b'revi with two balki yishtas. But that's as far as it goes. Revi b'revi means first cousins are sheni b'sheni, second cousins are shlishi b'shlishi, and third cousins are called revi b'revi. A lot of times they don't even, they never even met. They don't even know who, who they are. So there's such a chumrah, not to have even up until Revi Bervi with two Balkish. But past that, there isn't even any, any minig, there isn't even any chumrah to avoid having uh, relatives serve as Aiden. Rebbe, with yes. what's going on now and you have limited people, is there room to be makel? Yeah, sure. If you have no choice, so you have just basically, or, or a lot of times you have Shanam uh, Kittikunam, you have hundreds of people attending a wedding. But the alternative is, if you're not going to have, let's say, these people who are slightly relative related, but they're not really possible, strictly speaking, the alternative is to get people who are not observant, to get people who are, who are not honest in business. Aganif is possible and a Russia doesn't keep mitzvahs as possible That's a real bit. So if the alternative is to have uh, others who are questionable whether they're kosher or not, so it's better to have those who are related, but they're distantly related. Yeah, so strictly speaking, a sheni b'sheni is as far as it goes. Sheni b'shlishi is already kosher ladies. We have a minhog, um, the Shach and the Mishpah talks about this, to be miyached edim. What is Miyachet Edim? Tosis raises an issue. Um, there is a Mishnah in the first parak in Makas that talks about the din of Nimtza Echen Med Edim Korva Pasal. If you have a whole group of Edim watching something, two of the Edim are kosher, but then you have relatives watching. Let's say uh, when you have weddings, so you have uh, the father, the bride, the father, the groom are standing there uh, under the chuppah. So what does it help that you have two kosher Edim but it's in Tzach and Mehem Karba Apostle, so it's a problem. So Tesu solves the problem. Tesu and Sanhedrin, Daf Tesem and Aleph, and Amakis. Tesu says the only time there's an issue of Karba Apostle, if it's an Eid Hameid, if the wit all the three witnesses came to Bezden and they testified. So then, since the Eid Apostle who testified is Mitzurov with the others, so even the others are Apostle. But if the eight puzzle doesn't come to Bezden to testify, he's only eight Haroa, he was watching, but he's not at eight I made. He didn't come to testify, so there's no issue of Korva puzzle. That's how Tosa solves the problem. The Ritva uh, thinks that you still have a problem. He thinks that usually Tosa is right, that if eight Haroa, he's not been kind of Medaba, but if it's Git Mikidushin, by watching this causes the Kiddushan to take effect and the Nisuin to take effect. That's what we call Rab Chaim's language. We call it Edis Lekeim Adava. So then he is Mikhaim Adava, Kasim Adava. So the din of Korva Apostle should even apply if he's only eight Haraya. So that's why the Ritva quotes that his Rabbeim introduced the Chumrah to be Miyachid Edim. What does it help to be Miyachid? The Edim Ksherim have a mind. We don't want to be Mitztaref with the Edim Sulim to the exclusion of all others. Rabbi Soloveitchik formulated such a lotion when he first came to America and he, and he spoke English like a foreigner. So that's how he said, we're singling out the Adam to the exclusion of all others. Doesn't mean that the others are not kosher ladies. If you have other witnesses, kosher ladies is good, not, not a problem. But the two kosher Adam should exclude themselves. They should have in mind, they don't want to deem it star with the, with the puzzle of Adam. So that's uh, the common practice. We call up two Adam under the chuppah, and it's self understood that they, or you announce like that, or it's self understood that they have a mind not to be mitzarif uh, with the other witnesses. I remember at my wedding, Ramosha Feinstein by the Chosen Stitch, uh, Ramosha was there. So Ramosha told me I should be careful to drink a malolugma, but the kosh shall nisuin. So the kosh erisin is only a mina gagoinim, so you, you just take a sip. Shouldn't be a brachal of but the Koshon is suing that according to some girses, that's Medina de Gemara. So Hamavar Tzor Sheitam, you only yoitze the bracha ala kos if you drink a Maloy Lugma. A Maloy Lugma is a Roy Revis by Yonim Benini. Then if you drink a Maloy Lugma, then it's a Safik Brachal Achreina. Tosis is not sure how much wine do you have to drink in order to say a Brach Achreina. 
Is it Maloy Lugmov? That's the sheer drinking for Yom Kippur. Or is it Kezayas or is it Revias? The Ramam says that it's Revias. So Taisa says you should never drink that amount of wine. You should either drink less than a Kezayas or drink more than Revias. Don't drink in between, but that's what we do under the Chuppah. So the Chassan should have in mind that when he goes to the Yichud room, he's going to have cookies there. He's going to kiss the Kalo also in the Yichud room, but uh, when, he, when he's going to have the cookies, he's going to say, Allah Michia, so he'll say, Allah Michia, and he'll say, Allah Geffen. To say Allah Geffen by just having a Malod Lugmov is a Sophic Bracha Lavatol. Maybe only say a Bracha Achrain if he drank a Redis. Uh, but uh, if you're going to say a Bracha Achrain anyway, because you're going to have a Gazayis of cookies, especially if the Chassan is fasting a whole day. So then uh, many posts come hold that uh, it's okay to add on Allah Geffen, Rapia Geffen. It's not, you don't say Safi Brach is Loki, you're not allowed to add on. Since you're saying the Brach Achrena anyway, so there's nothing wrong with adding on Allah Geffen, Rapia Geffen. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein has in his safe on Bo Metziah an idea, which, um, which in a Tshuva he writes that he never meant that. So, but, but a lot of people quoted the name Rabbi Moshe, but he says he never meant it. When they say Shlom Zalman wrote like this, let's say they made the Kabbalah's Kenyan with the Chassan by Yom, but he's not going to give the Ksuba to the Kala until uh, nighttime. The Chup is going to take place. The Kabbalah's Kenyan is before the Shkia, and the Chup is going to take place after the Shkia. So, what date do you write on the Ksuba? So, uh, so strictly speaking, we really pass, can you write the date when they made the Kabbalah's Kenyan? Because there uh, was already in the Schayev, he was already in the Schayev, and the Shtab the Hanachosin to pay for the Ksub in case he divorces his wife. But uh, others are of the opinion, of Shlomo Zama is of the opinion that the Ksub is not only a star on, on the Chiyuvei Momen, it's a star on the fact that they're ma- it's a star on the fact that they're married. So you shouldn't have the wrong date. You should uh, write the date, the later date from. Um, when when the chuppah is going to take place. The gamma practice is not so. The gamma practice says you write the date when you did the um, Kabbalah's Kenyan, even though you know in advance that uh, that the chuppah is going to take place by Laila. Okay, the only thing I didn't discuss is how do you pick uh, who the Kala should be? Okay, that is another discussion. Very good. Everyone should have a successful day. We'll get together tomorrow. What are we talking about tomorrow? I forgot already. 12 o'clock, they'll give us here tomorrow. Good. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Very good.